Hello and welcome to episode 162 of New Meta Podcast. It's part two of our discussion, our tier list of the post 7.0 heroes. Five down, five to go. We'll be giving our takes on Snapfire, Void Spirit, Hoodwink, Dawnbreaker and Marcy, as well as talking about our games and perhaps some team pro team shuffles too. Marco, how are you doing this week? Very well, thank you. Nice. Is it a generally stronger group of heroes or a generally weaker group of heroes that we've got to discuss today? Because we've got we've got some some good ones in the rearview mirror. Um, to be honest, I'm pretty fifty fifty still. We got mm. rid of the trash tier tier three Pango in the bin. <laughs> that was the only one in my bottom tier, so no super oh, negative ones today. Yeah, you had Bit one a... poor tier hero. Interesting. Yeah. All right. How are you? Do- how are you doing? Adam, are you well this week? Yeah, I'm good. Do we ever come to terms with the tier list consensus? No. I think it confused everybody as well <laughs> in the Discord. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's part of what makes it fun, I suppose. <laughs> what, having to replay the pod because you didn't understand it the first time? <laughs> yeah, I feel like there was somebody that agreed with Marco's Oh, I got, a, I got a few back up. They've been a rewarded hand up some leave. Privately. That was really disconcerting <laughs> to see that there was any amount of people that agreed with Marco. Yeah, that's that's strange. That's people wanting free coaching, I think. It's not actually people <laughs> that agree with the tier list. Um, let's just fly straight into the pod. I don't think we've got any housekeeping or anything to discuss. Games this week. Marco, you, you've you been playing a little bit of ranked, as have I a little bit. How, how have you doted in this week? I've been dabbling. Um, I'm on this solid 50% ranked win rate. I can't... I think I've played about 10 games, so a decent sample size. Uh, I've been queuing all roles, so majority five, but then I did play a couple of pos ones because I wanted to play PA. Played a couple of pos three Marcy's. I think one one there, so generally mixed bag, but I have to say, the, the last game I just played, queue all roles, get pos four. Oof, oof. Who do I do? Actually, quite interesting. The first two heroes picked were banned. Barra and Weaver were picked by both teams. God, Barra's in every game right now. Barra's a bit too common, yeah. Then the Weaver one was pretty weird. Anyway, off lane, pos 3 Tusk, and I'm a pos 4 Lena. I die a few times in the... A bit of trade, but die a few times such that my pos 3 Tusk is like, stop dying, what are you doing? Screwing the game. From that, proceed to go godlike, literally beyond godlike. It was the most beautiful game of Dota I've played in, honestly, years. I swear to God, years of the, the level that we were all playing. It was CIS, me, Tusk, Tusk, it was Blink. We got Avenge and then an OD with Blink, Meme Hammer, all make, running around whilst Rave King, AFK Farms, just slaughtering. It was honestly beautiful like four of us have all got about 40k plus a we're hitting tier threes at 22 minutes because we've just stomped so much game takes another 15 to end because a bit of back and forth but oh it was just beautiful dota and it was what i play ranked for it gave me sanity because i've had some games recently where i mean i've lost to techies and tinkers and had just some shit show ranked teams but this brought sanity right back it was there was communication on the mic there was no negativity it was coordination it was everything you want from dota and round it off at the very end the very end of the, of the game it was basically hardcore ninja <laughs> i had um i got the cheese and the refresher shard because poor soul you know very important and they had this pa on the enemy team so so much was about Right, the dodge and the positioning and the Yules, four staff because they had the clock, go scepters, and then I had this refresher play at the end where PA thinks she, she's got me, but then I mean you pop refresher and you don't get hit by the dagger and she blinks in and it's like, Ugh. and Not then you know, go scepter or something, yeah, that kind of thing. Like it was two right. lots of go scepters and four staffs and just comp- oh, and you know you've you've destroyed the enemy team's mental state when you're hitting throne and like two of them DC before game's over. <laughs> and oh honestly pure just peak quality Dota 2 so that was great it's Pop such a good feeling well. when you play with a Tusk and you're like rolling For I feel like my 
the the game I remember as my greatest performance was playing Tusk because you have that potential to just CIS mode round the map maybe with one or two other heroes and you can just win games just in a ball. That's pretty fun. Oh, yeah, and I got those wards making oh, some beautiful wards, sentry gank movements. Oh, just honestly, big brains exploding. I got karma <laughs> afterwards because we had terrible game <laughs> me and adam <laughs> straight away so i got her balanced right back down to earth but honestly yeah good games nice how's uh dota been treating you adam anything to report i have the quietest 2 and 14 streak <laughs> apparently i've been losing every game but it doesn't feel that bad so that's good my soul wasn't crushed 214 that's nasty but i didn't realize until marco was like nice red page that i was like oh i guess i've been losing every game smile time to play ranked ready for the bounce back it's got to start at some point can't go two and 14 oh there are a couple of them here are ability draft that's okay so that really doesn't count mm. um yeah shame on whoever invited me to play that mode <laughs> just awful some people love it. Some people are all about ability draft. I keep seeing yeah. purge videos on YouTube recommended to me. Ability draft, like pro tournament or something. Some people love it, and then you get into the game, and enemy Kunkka goes twenty three and zero because they have Tidebringer plus Wraith King crit and a Shadow Blade, and they just one shot everybody <laughs> over and over again. And it's like this is fun. Yeah. Um. You want the last, the final RD two L update? It's yes. over. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, we snuck into the playoffs as a 14 seed. Top oh. 16 top sixteen teams made it. We were a 14, so we had to go against the number three seed. And um, our mid didn't show up. So, you know, we had another stand-in. It's our fourth different mid of the season. And... You know, we actually we actually won a game. We actually forced it to game three. It was a best of three. And uh, that was the first game we had won in a long time. So that felt good. But we Nice, how did losing. you win? What was the what what was the strat? Uh we had so the our stand in plays a lot of Viper and so we just first phased Viper middle. I think we we went Grimstroke Viper, and then in the second phase, I guess they just thought we were really bad, and they and they just picked Storm into Viper, and then our our Viper won mid real hard. Our PA beat the Sand King bottom, and then I was Darkseer. We had Darkseer um, Spirit Breaker, and then later in the game, you know, just put Ags Iron shells on people, Lotus Orb off. Bad things, and then uh, just normal punch people and make walls. It's pretty good nice. to get a big Wraith King illusion. And the, oh the normal yeah, punch Wraith is really King's good. Wraith King's one of the best illusions to get. That's such a great feeling. But yeah, that was a just like a real solid clinical win. And uh, then the I played Doom in the last game and. We just didn't get there. They got a little too far ahead. And they had a really farm span against our um, PL. And also we got our Viper banned. So that's what happens. Hmm. Interesting. But, till till next season? No, that's it. I think I'm, <laughs> think I'm good. Boost. Yeah, it's just like... It had been like a year or two since I had tried it. I was like, I'll try it again. Because I had moved. It's like, maybe that'll be good. Something to do. Yeah. Like, now it's... I think I'll just play a normal game of Dota instead. Hmm. I would it's definitely like, like to try it at some point. It gives you flexibility. Because, you know, it's like, okay, I know every Sunday at 8, I have to be, like, at my computer. And sometimes mm. you're, like, out of town or want to go somewhere and do something. Hmm. And now I can just, like, play a ranked game instead or something. Yeah, that's nice. Um, my games, I played a game of ranked today. First ranked game that I played in 
weeks and weeks could, could be months actually I don't I really don't know but win easy win Necro offlane I was talking to Mark about it pre-pod but it was one of those games where you absolutely dominate the lane I was level 7 and the enemy void was level 4 um, I had a Weaver pos 4 and they had a Rubik pos 5 to go with the void and in the mid game we have two farming cores we've got a sniper mid and a PA1 who's going battle fury so it's basically me versus the world in terms of space making so I'm just pushing in lanes and then inevitably get like rotated on with four heroes and die so I'm like oh this this great start I had and we're just like not using it I've got I've got a 13 minute pipe like I should be we're strong but then it's actually fine because I look over at my PA and sniper who have who are like levels ahead of me and just absolutely crushing the game and then we just ran away with it and that's actually the second necro offlane win i've had in the last few days i played one yesterday um that wasn't ranked though so having a lot of fun with that i think he's a great offlane hero probably i mean it's easy to say that when you played a hero twice but i feel like when i see it played pos three i quite i do quite like it what what the hero gives I, i prefer it to mid I think it's sometimes when you play necro mid and you're really slow yet you're the pos two with this farm and it's kind of i prefer to have a mid that either has more burst damage or is more mobile or preferably both um but as the three it works really well you can just go utility items pipe halberds lotus hood yours whatever you want kai Sanj, all this good stuff and it works very well and then other than that not a whole lot had a Mars mid loss, which is a painful one. I think Adam was in that game yesterday. So, yeah. Still, still trying to win a game on Mars. That wasn't my fault. I can't remember what happened in that game. Probably was my fault, actually. Um, oh, no, Adam was in that, wasn't in that game. That yeah, was, I don't remember that. Yeah, that was a different stack, different four stack. That was quite a fun... That was quite a fun game. That was, that was against a Shaman mid. So it was mid Mars versus mid Shadow Shaman. And... The shaman got farmed. Like the, we just traded farm mid, and then later into the game, they they just had so much CC. Like they had a hoodwink who we'll be talking about later, who just was crushing because we had a lot of heroes that have to go in. We had a clockwork, a Mars, and a Wraith King, and so hoodwink we was getting three man like bushwhacks and stuff, and it was just it was nasty stuff. But anyway. Yeah, so that was my game. The world is happening when we have uh, Marco playing Lena and Stan playing Necro in, in ranked. You know what I mean? I feel like the yeah. roles should be reversed. Yeah, Marco's a dirty Necro player. I'm a skilled I, Lena I player. Know. I, honestly, I, I was thinking about this about this Necro when I was speaking to Stan that maybe I should just main pause three Necro. <laughs> maybe. I used just it. To, I, it. I, yeah, yeah. I, I used it to climb like. 10 years ago in Dota 1 it's just like a sweaty basic hero can't go wrong mm. yeah just like oh all these tanky heroes you're at half goodbye yeah yeah I really like the 10 talent uh, that I didn't even realise was a thing but the Reaper's Scythe cast range <laughs> yeah that's nice is it yeah. strength the alternative 8 strength yeah uh, that's, that's quite that's quite a good no but I, you never can on the downfalls of the hero. Same with like LC cast range talent at ten. Like the that duel and the good. scythe are like two of the things. Oh, I can. I'm so close, but I can't do it. The it duel so is easier. crazy. The duel because it's basically doubles. Yeah, the cast from range. melee. Yeah, hundred. I've never got it on necro, so I'm not. I can't. Ah, oh, it's a good one. Did, did you feel line. it? Did you feel it? Um, like the benefit. I definitely felt it in the first win. The one today. Less so, I probably made maybe there was one. Actually, yeah, I think there was one time, but in the game before, yeah, it felt really nice. Like, Six hundred to seven hundred. Hmm. Eight strength is definitely fine. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with the strength, but I I actually really like the cast range on scythe. I just feel like there's a lot of times where I try and scythe, and it's like the mm. the cast point, the backswing is actually like annoying. It's half a second. Yeah. So if you're against fast heroes, they can easily get out of range in half a second. Or they go out of vision. Yeah, and stuff like that. 
So I mean, the out of vision thing probably wouldn't be helped by the cast range, but but yeah, that was a nice talent. I thought it was like nice quality of life talent. Um, let's have I a word a, on. Sorry, one other thing. Yep. Since we're speaking of Mars, we got a shout out, old Marco over here, gifting me his crimson witness chest for some unexplicable reason. But I wow. happily accepted, and then I opened it and got Mars, the That's one good I one. wanted. Good That's one. a yep. big pop. Yep. Still haven't won with it, but it'll happen. <laughs> I'm, in the meantime, I'm making red Medusa faces with my shield. Nice. Very cool. It's going to be like the sniper when you got the Spaceman sniper. It's just going to have to come out for a while. It's going to be Mars every game for a while. Yep. Let's have a word on roster shuffles, maybe. Um, I know quite a few of the teams are confirmed. There's this new SEA stack with Fly. There's I, EG isn't confirmed yet, is it? But Secret is. Team Liquid's had some movement. Matumba Man's back, Zai's back. Alliance anything you're, you're excited to see? Yeah, anything you guys are like excited to see? Or interested in, etc.? I think Sumail to Secret is really cool because of how that you've got that versatility from Puppy and Secret and they usually have very broad hero pools and I think that could be pretty sick for Sumail back in the mid as well mm. oh, I, lo- I love a bit of I mean Sumail mid is iconic so I think it's nice to see him back there and then in this kind of Puppy strategic powerhouse team that's very cool I'm mm. disappointed Zai's gone to Liquid Liquid. I mean, have they even announced the full Liquid lineup? I don't think so. so. No, one, no one knows, right? Or... We know that it's Insania, Tiger, Matu, and um, Zai, but we don't know the fifth. I think that's the current Oh situation. my god, I, I if it's well Boxy confused. or... I thought Matu was... I, I watched the video and it was like, yeah, he's back to Liquid, but I still just thought of Nigma Liquid, because they showed a clip of him with... The Kuroki stack? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, confusing. oh, he's back with Kuroki. Oh, his ILTW like, kicked or something. Oh, mate. All right, I have to catch up. So Matu's on Liquid with Zai and Insania. Okay, that and, makes it quite cool. Yeah. And Zai's rumoured to be POS4. I don't know how that even... I don't know why that's a rumour, but it's listed as a rumour on this thread. That's just um, happening. Is that a thing? He's just playing POS4 now in pubs. I think so. So people are like, oh, he's Well, I mean... They're either it's either Boxy or mm. Mickey, right? And who's I think the, Boxy's left. Who's the mid for Liquid then? We so, don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So we don't know the mid or the three. I'm just catching up after that Matu thing. Yeah, screen. we don't know the mid or the three. I think is the situation. No, no, we know we know four of the heroes, so we should know that Tiger might be three. I guess. Okay. If Zai is four, then Tiger may well be three. I don't know. Or mid, maybe. I don't know. What's happening? Why is it so hard to... Okay, so they're missing one player. Keep straight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That, that, okay, with Matt, Maybe he is three. Respectable. Maybe they tried out threes and it didn't work out. Like what happened with Gabby and EG. And then Gabby, I guess, was sad and he leaked EG's roster. So, okay, this EG stuff. Gabby trialed for EG in it as a three. Didn't get it. Yeah. And who's the leak? Who's the three that EG's going to get? The VP player. Nightfall. Nightfall, Nightfall. yeah. Along yeah. with... Ramsey's pick up another, <laughs> Yeah, another VP yeah. carry as your offlaner. So weird that EG just addicted to carries from CIS to play three, like not even the same position. Yeah, the CIS is weird. I hope it works. And then Jerax the five at EG. Do we think that's legit? Yes. That's pretty cool. The Jerax if, 5. If it happens, I think that's real cool. That's Jerax very cool. Crit back together. Did they play get, together? No. Uh, no, I think Jerax came from Liquid after as Crit left. Okay. God, it's pretty grim now. They need to get they need to get Crit on 5 again so Jerax can play 4. Oh, crit 5 so snooze. <laughs> like, yeah, Crit Crit 5 is snooze. He's got no interest playing 5. He he played 5 for a whole season. I, he did, but I, I'm like I can just 
So I, you, you can know in he his head. Yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't want to play. Man that. needs gold. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to like, play. You don't want to see crit on like a warlock in a pro oh, game. You just don't want to see it. But to be fair, I don't mind seeing Jarax on a warlock because this is if Jarax coming back. It's presumably if he's coming back to like Captain EG, it's pr- you would think that it's in this like I want to be a captain, which I've never done before, and like try my Dota philosophy, and therefore I'm happy to play warlock because it's not about the hero; it's about <laughs> like orchestrating my ideas or something. Mm. So that would be interesting he, to see. He was such a godlike player at the TIs. So good, yeah. I, I, so it's interesting that he's back, supposedly. Meanwhile, the rest of OG, now legends, blah, 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 they're all crumbling and going into the dust. Like Seb did his retirement today, or announced mm-hmm. some sort of retirement, and then it seems like... I mean, who else was on their team's... Topson? Fading away, Topson. What's Topson doing? He hasn't said... There's no news there, is there? He's, so far, he's on, still on OG, as far as we know. I, I'm surprised Jarrett's found motivation to come back. Mm, so am I. I. It really felt like he was just done, didn't it? Yeah. When he retired, I was like, oh, he's definitely, of all the players that are retiring, he's the one that's like definitely not coming back. And he's just like, lol, I'm back. Apparently, it's not confirmed. Maybe this is all. I still almost don't believe it, honestly. I'll like, believe it when I see it. Yeah. But, I don't know. But then it makes me think who else would you get as a five? Oh. Yeah, yeah, but then um, with Alliance announcing. That means Weeha and Saksa don't have teams. So S four. He's we don't know. There's like lots of people that it seems like you know, don't have spots. Not that any of them are fives, but it's interesting that yeah, OG, there's gonna be people left out. Yeah. OG might have a full roster pretty much of available spaces. So yeah. <laughs> maybe some rejects go there. Although they've announced like a whatever his name is, a motherfucker or whatever. Uh, this kid, this How this they? like sixteen. Well, <clears throat> OG tweeted, "There's a player with a three letter name that begins with E that's joining us." Oh, and AFT. So it's just, Owie. AFT, it's just like guaranteed. Owie, Owie. Owie. So Owie. It's Maybe not gonna. Yeah, be. That's, that's, He's retired. Isn't isn't he? He's done. I though. mean, probably It'd be pretty fun but... if it was. But yeah, so it's this is gonna be this. AFT kid who's young so we'll see about that but yeah that's an interesting one I feel like no, I'm interested to see what No-Tail and Topson do like if they can be bothered I feel like No-Tail if he is going to keep playing it would definitely be as a 5 for OG surely as a captain but I feel like Topson maybe could join another team I don't know um, we'll see I feel like No-Tail has to die now he doesn't have Seb, like, holding him up every night, putting him to bed. He has Seb's to gone. die. <laughs> Not die, but, like, fade into... Fade ether. into nothingness, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. so grim that if Jarrett Go goes to, to his OG, seven EG. million euro mansion. <laughs> yeah, it's Portugal mansion. I mean, if Jarrett is on EG, then it proves Crit was right, and no tells left, so... What does that mean? What, what you, Crit was right about what? Because, I mean, all this... OG hate and crit and fly leaving OG and all that. So if, if Jarrett is going to go to to EG and party over with crit, it shows you who's right. Who's right on the right side of history? Right. Do I mean? right. In Don't terms remember of the big the, the OG shoulder versus, check heard around the world? Yeah, shoulder, check, shoulder check. But why? What's the what's the argument? Who's yeah, Jarex, right? Jarex is is confirming that crit and co on EG are, are the. Oh, right just side of like history. Because oh, Jarrett no, is the mediator the of right, he's right, the like right. he's got the final say. So, I mean, he's yeah. not, he's not, he wouldn't go on a team with someone who, who was wrong. The bad left. guy, yeah, yeah the bad guy. But so. he's not on a team with Fly, so he's not on the team with a bad guy. Yeah, Fly's been booted around the world. <laughs> yeah, um, Jarrett, oh, man, he's one of my favorite players. But like on EG, I actually yeah, so God, grim. So I don't weird. want to cheer for them. Come over to the dark side, brother. Yeah. If if EG win a TI, then Jarex is goat. Oh god! Three I'm TIs. For it. I could get. I'm all that. for it. Yeah. Let's change up the goats, please. Yeah. <laughs> We've got a job to do, and that's go through five heroes and rate them on our tier list. First up, it's Snapfire. I feel like we'll do it in the same way as we did in previous pods. Oh, I say previous pods, plural, the previous pod. 
last week where we just take it in turns to introduce one. Um, Adam, I'm going to let you go first because Marco led uh, last week. So okay. where do you have Snapfire and like what do you like, not like, etc.? I have Snapfire currently tier 3. B tier? Yes. Yeah. Yes, third tier. <laughs> um, currently, I think on ship okay. she is probably third most broken behind. Hard to, cost, and hard to remember that MK, but that's when you would max the E and you would just mm. like <laughs> one spell would just knock them out of lane. Yeah, it, it was super. It was awesome. Um, I like her because she's a support, pretty solidly a support. Definitely can be used as a middle in like a pub stomp way or as a three maybe if you mm. want to really prioritize getting that eggs. Um, but I really enjoy her. She's got a lot of damage. Really like the cookie grandma um, plus how the train your dragon feel. Really great trailer for the hero. And she kind of does a little bit of everything. Especially with the Ags and Ag Shard, because then it makes the Q stun, the W stuns, and you can throw somebody from really far away, or you can jump in and save someone and throw them really far away. And mm. I always liked that little Shredder counters Phoenix Egg. I always thought that was really cool, as mm. like a like a co- gotcha little gotcha pick, and then. Does uh, the Shredder right now is minus armor? Yes. Right? Yeah, so good against towers. There was a time when I think it was like slowing attack speed, which also made it good against towers just for a different reason. Mm. Quick but stack yeah, corner. Like, What's the armor loss per stack? Uh, let's right. go with one. Does Point, it not scale? 0.75? No, it doesn't, st- it doesn't scale. It does scale. So there's a fixed damage per shot that scales, and there's range that scales, and there's cooldown and mana cost that scales. Cooldown which means scales it's a down, very mana cost scales up. Very value level one then. If it's the same amount of minus armor, mm. that's why that plus a, a blightstone, and you're like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, and like gush as well. Snapfire ties a good lane. Yeah, yeah, she's Snap. a great um, solar crest carrier. Why did you put her in the second to bottom tier? With all because right now I don't think she's that good. Oh, okay, so you're going off this kind of present power level. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We're we're talking about how Concept. we feel about them overall. Yeah. My bad. Uh, no, I like her a lot. Top tier, S tier, S tier. <laughs> wow, the turnaround. I mean, it's a it's like a it's a support hero, right? So I'm going to love all the support heroes. Yeah, fair um, enough. And it's, it's got a little bit something different versus, like, uh, classical supports, right? It does big damage, comparatively. And I didn't even talk about the Mortimer's Kisses. That's, um... That's, like, really fun to pull off combos. I mean, usually when I play it, right, there are no stuns. It's just up for me to like blindly try and hit this thing from max range because I'm never like in position. And then you maybe hit one kiss, but if you ever mm. like actually combo it with a chrono or like you know just some stuns or roots, and you actually get to lay waste to people, actually very very strong spell. Hmm. What do you think about Snapfire and Locker? So with. Just the hero, tier one, second highest tier. Second highest tier. With Agonims and Ag Shard, it pushes it to S tier. High so, praise, interesting. Yeah, I think so. Just pre Ag stuff. The kit is it's pretty cool. Um, got a different avenues of that the stun. Or the minus armor synergy. I think that all this each spell is pretty unique, pretty pretty cool. It is a new hero, so spells should be cool. They are the ultimate big artillery 
can get behind that. Pretty fun hero concept. But then I think, to me, it gets pushed into S tier with the Agonims because the next level utility, the next level plays possible, say with these like Blink, Scatterblast stun, Cookie stun, crazy plays like Zing Q, annihilates everyone on Snap. Or you get the Ags and you're doing these gobble up play saves or aggression. You know those Ags. Yeah, it just t- it takes the hero to an S tier level. It can do so much. All very, very different. Also varied, but such high uh, skill potential. So it feels hard to not put it in that top tier. And no, then... we didn't, I didn't even uh, mention the W. Like, not only are you jumping up and down hills, but your your melee heroes aren't getting kited because you're mm. you know throwing them. And they, they stun and then they get the whack a mole for a while. Yeah, I think the design of those spells are quite impressive. The yeah. Way they work. Mm. Maybe I'm being. Uh, I've been talked out of my. Why well, I originally had this hero down. Uh, so, I mean, I had it down. I have Snapfire as B tier, which is the third tier out of four. Um, and my reason for that was. I really like Snapfire Cookie. I think that's a really cool spell. It's a cool idea. I'm not bothered by Scatterblast, and I'm not bothered by Little Shredder either. And I think it's cool that Little Shredder counters Phoenix Egg and Tombstone, but it's like too gimmicky. It's just like too broken. You just press E and suddenly Tombstone and Supernova like aren't spells anymore. And it's just kind of annoying. It I used do... to be better. It used to be more of a legit spell. Before pre nerfs, yeah, it's like still, in the last year, it used to be. I still think yeah, it's pretty good. It's minus armor spell. Yeah, it gives. That's rush. why you're doing it now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good in the lane because you use little shredder on someone. And if you get all the shots, they've got le- much less armor. If you combo that with, like we said, blightstone or another minus armor spell on your lane partner, it's really really strong. In the game, it just feels a bit gimmicky because, like, the minus armor doesn't st- scale at all. So. The longer the game goes, the more armor people have, the less good it is. So it's basically just this gimmick thing of like, oh, it, it's really good specifically against Tombstone and uh, and Egg. And it's just a bit like, pfft. I don't know, I don't love it. I think it, they, you know, they kind of try and make it interesting with this level 20 talent where it uses attack damage. And I do think that can be cool. Um, and the ult is interesting because it's a really weird one. And you could say it's a bit gimmicky, but I actually like it quite a lot. I think the ult's actually quite cool. I don't like playing against it, but there's nothing else like it in the game. And I just think it's a it's a cool concept. I remember my first reaction when, I, when Snapfire got released and I saw the demo of this spell. I was like, what on earth is this? This is unbelievable. <laughs> like full range artillery solo kill hero. Like what is going on? Um but yeah that's my take I do like the fact that it's a range strength support I don't think that I don't think there's another hero that Phoenix is range strength I suppose Phoenix yeah range strength can be support yeah it, it is Husker? really uncommon or did you sorry you, you, you were saying support yeah so I do like that I do like that a lot maybe this hero should be A tier rather than B tier but I'll stick with my guns. I'll stick with what I put. And to be fair, all of the heroes from B tier up, I like. So even Dark Willow and Grimstroke, which I also put B tier, I really like those heroes. Maybe I think just for the for the sake of support, I should probably choose my favorite out of Grimstroke, Snapfire, and Dark Willow and upgrade it to, to A tier. Um, but yeah, let's move on to. Void Spirit was the next hero. Wow, that's crazy. There have been three heroes since Void Spirit. It feels like Void Spirit came out just the other day. Um, Marco, I'll let you lead on on the fourth spirit, the purple purple fella. I wonder if Adam will join us in placing Void Spirit S tier. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> um, I know Adam's not a fan of the no mobility. But, yeah, that's why you want Marco to go first on this because yeah, I give it all the praise and Adam can come and s- slay it. But I think yeah, s- eh, s- straight S tier. Even though I don't play it as much because it's a bit weaker now. And it's, I mean, oh, back in the day when it was it was broken on release and it had so much damage and damage output. Now it's a bit more balanced. You have to be a bit more spell cast or utility or 
play it a bit later. You have to get items before you're obnoxious. But yeah, as a concept, two mobility spells. It's almost three because you've got two charges on the ult. That mobility is just so fun. Absolutely have a whale of a time slashing around everywhere. Cool hero. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think it's hard not to at least put it in the second tier for its mm. kit. Um, uh, to be honest, the E is pretty dull, the resonant uh, AoE one. But it gives yeah. you... I like the fact that it gives you armor. Or not armor, what's it called? Damage block. The way that mm. Ember gives you magic block. That is quite cool. Um, but then... Yeah, the astral step is really what makes the hero so cool and so fun. And the catch potential is... Yeah. Mm. I, I, it's hard to say. Yeah. Maybe I'm being like overly... Maybe I actually right. don't like it that much. I think I do. I've just not played it in a while because I feel like you have to be a bit more patient with it and you can't stomp games like you used to. Mm. But it can I'll, definitely do a lot still. I'll say my piece and then we can get the counter from Adam because I also have the Zero Esther. And again, similar to what I said about another hero that I can't remember last week, um, I the reason I think Void Spirit is so well designed is because I love the spells in a vacuum and I like them in a combo. So you take the ult by itself, you take the Q by itself, the W by itself. Even the E, I think, is kind of cool just having burst AoE around you. Um, they they work well by themselves and they ease a great spell in the lane, like W is too. You can just use them and be effective by themselves. And then you can also use them in a big combo and like ult in into Q into W E and then ult out will get like combo all your spells really nicely. So I just think that works so well. It has it's the quintessential mid hero as it should be as a spirit. It has all the strengths and weaknesses that I like. I personally like in a mid. So strengths, magic burst and mobility, and weaknesses. It's very squishy if it gets locked down. Like if you get locked down, if you're stunned, you die. Um, very bad versus roots and leashes stuff like that. I just think it works so well. And it's, it, again, so fun to play. And a mid-spirit hero, when you have a good game, or just in general, should be fun to play. Um, so I just think it it is the mid-hero you want to see. I guess similar to how I'd say a hero like Pango is like definitely an offlaner, and some people play it for the same way some people, some crazy people play Void Spirit for. But it just fits the role so well, and I, I just I just like that. I like that that can work. But um, Adam, what have you got to say on voice for it? Yeah, it's tier four. It's in the dumpster. <laughs> I it's almost the point of whether or not I hate it more than Invoker. No, what? You way. Can't. what? Yeah, this hero does just as much as Invoker. Oh, it moves all over the, the map. You say if you get if you stun him, oh, you can kill him. How do you ever stun anything? He jumps into a magical hole and. And does a, uh, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh, um, magical hats, dark magician bullshit, and jumps <laughs> off like three thousand range away, and then you're like, oh, okay, well I made him run away, and then he double jaunts back in, yules you, pulls you towards him, and explodes you for a million damage. You're like, what? What's going oh, on? Adam makes me want to play Void Spirit. <laughs> um, yeah. I... I hate him. He's in the uh, S tier annoying with Pango. Those are my two S tier annoying heroes. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I I don't like really anything about him. Um, the fact that the shield, you know, absorbs damage, he baits you into thinking that you can maybe do a little bit something. I mean, it's probably like the most annoying. One of the most annoying heroes that deal with as a support because he just explodes you if you get within a screen of him but you have to get within a screen of, screen of him to attempt to stun to try and help um yeah i think he is in a good place though uh, he's, he's so much weak maybe now to. after they like weakened the w but not at ti ti was busted uh, he was i don't think it was busted at ti either i think it's 
he gets busted when you get maybe three, four items on him. I don't know if there's a hero that's more busted that has three or four items on him plus 25. Like, eh, like an M- he is uh, M- giga storm. busted. A lot of mids do a lot with three, four items. Invoker, like, Ag's Refresher, that's got to be worse. No, nah, I don't think so. He's got so much damage. He's got so much damage. And then once he's, like, dissimulate, stun for 40 seconds, and once the hero, like, I don't know if you've ever seen a, a Void Spirit that has an Octarine core, but it just makes you question your existence on the earth <laughs> or like, why did I put 8,000 hours into this game? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it's, um, it's something else. Is a... It's one of those things where I don't play the hero. Right. So, hmm. so it's one of those things where there's four people on my team that has the opportunity to play it, but there's five on the enemy team. So you always get to see void spirit more on the enemy team than you have on your team. And it is the only hero in the game that I have not won a game on. I'm wow, zero that's crazy. So hmm. I have to get the win just so I can say I've won a game on every hero. But after that, I'll just... He's a fun hero to watch. Like when you watch pro games, I'll say that. That's good. And um, a thing that I really respect about the Void Spirit design is that they've managed to make an alt that is on a re- is a low cooldown ult with two charges, which is already like kind of weird and hard to balance, and yet just works so well with the hero and just complements everything else. Like all these other heroes have these really long cooldown, very sort of effective and weird ults. Like literally, all of these other heroes have a, a high cooldown ult, and it does something sort of so game changing or like so unique whereas astral step doesn't all it does is it teleports you a short amount of distance which a lot of spells do or blink does loads of stuff does does like attack damage through does like a, a, a tiny slow for like 0.2 seconds or whatever or like one second and yet despite that because of the other spells the hero has it just completely makes the hero insane like, I just think that's cool that they've got this spell that if a if a bunch of other ha- heroes had it, I suppose it's like I mean it's still very strong by itself because it's like a blink that you doesn't get disabled if you take damage, short uh, short range. But I just think it's it works so well with the hero. I love the fact that they found this ult for the hero as opposed to some like crazy eighty second mega nuke or some you know big. Oh, he's ult. a spirit. He's got to be mobile. Yeah. yeah, he's got to be local down on mobile, I suppose. Yeah. Um, let's move on then to Hoodwink, which again it feels weird that Hoodwink. There's two heroes that have been out since Hoodwink, but there we are. Um, I guess I will lead on this one. Uh, so Hoodwink, I have C tier, which is the fourth tier, the lowest tier. Um, and I've written here that I don't like any of the spells other than W, which would be the bushwhack. I don't like the model. I don't like the personality. There's basically nothing I like about this hero. I think the Q spell, like, oh, on the one hand, oh, this Q, W, what a cool combo. But it's like, the Q is such a trash spell. Like, it just, it gives a, it gives a tree that lets you do the W. So if they just had that all in W, it'd be fine. Like, having to press the Q first baits you into thinking you've done a combo of two spells but actually you've just you're only doing one thing which is stunning I'm sure you have this weird Akon that bounces but like who really cares about that then the scurry is meh like I don't really care like you're just scurrying through trees and then the ult is weird and broken if you play against heroes that get wrecked by break it's broken and then why does this hero randomly have the potential to just do 70% of a hero's damage with a fully wound up ult. It just feels weird and I just don't like it and I'm not a fan of Hoodwink. Does anyone else have any advances on that? You, what you do you think, Marco? Nah, I'm all on board and you make me want to put Hoodwink lower, but the only reason Hoodwink's in my second to last tier is because 
<laughs> Pango is just Pango sure. needs its own tier. <laughs> Pango needs his own tier, so Hoodwink was able to escape it. But I I agree. There's not there's nothing really about the hero that I like. To be honest, it's like you say, Acorn shots dead. Scurrying through the trees is pretty dead. It's kind of anno- it's, it is really annoying. I think the ult is quite cool. I've, I've, I've big burst damage, far range. Again, this like artillery angle that they're going for with new heroes. That's quite cool, but I really can't see many positives, if any. I struggle. I feel kind of bad for the hero. It feels like it's out of all the new heroes, it's got. It's not really got much going for it. Hmm. What do you think, Adam? Are you gonna have more to say? About Hoodwink, I just kind of think she's boring. Mm. Yeah. Like I don't think she's, I don't even think she's not. I don't even think she's weak. Like she got played at TI, and it looked. And she got played in the major, and it looked real busted. Mm. If you can combo the the oh, it like you know one shots pretty much anybody. Yeah, and it's like, but it's like a one trick pony. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, because because like the hero gets ca- countered by a quelling blade. Or a battle fury, like in pro, mm. like you, you just, you know, eat the tree, and uh, that was really cool to see. Like uh, secret, I think, it's four wind ranger, and oh, acorn shot comes out, power shot, no more stun uh. on the W, just like real quick, um, because it just now the way the stun works, the damage is over time, and it just stops the stun if the tree goes away, so. I don't know. She's just kind of dead. In it's my just opinion. this old, isn't it? It's just yeah, when you it's, see it in pro games, it's just like you're in a death squad, just, like a two man death squad with the old, and that's it. Honestly, just an ultimate in my mind. Like, yeah, she's basically 400 HP, gets exploded, but she can stand in a tree, and you can line up these um, ultis and blow someone up like that with a bane. Or, mm. you know, just a lasso or anything, really. And it's big damage. And it has to be because it's a, you know, pseudo skill shot. Mm. Um, it gets real obnoxious when it, like, pierces pure. Like, when you get level 20 plus, or is it still at level 20? Like, the cool, like it charges up faster? Yes. Um, yeah, I haven't played her in a long time. But... I don't know. It's like a. It's, I will say she does have a. Um, not only is she kind of dead, but she also has very annoying, <laughs> like gameplay components. <laughs> so it's like boring mixed with when you're playing against. It, you're like, why the squirrels in the trees, and and why does she just get the run through everything? And then um, it's hard to chase her, which it has to be because she has no HP. Yeah. And then um, yeah the. You're like, oh, I, I got shot and it took 75% of my health and then I got right-clicked one time by the enemy carry and I'm dead. That mm. was pretty interactive and cool. Or like they wind up an ult and miss and it's like, oh, well, yeah, okay, that's their that's entire it. hero. So they just missed. So that's it now. One thing, just, um, yeah. one cool thing you can do is that the ult, you know, shoots you backwards. So there's sometimes you can like shoot yourself down a hill or up a hill, and that's mm. kind of cool. But besides that, um, just not not really doing it for me. I would defend. I think one the reason that she's not total trash bottom tier for me is there was this phase. Maybe it's only in pubs possible. Of core hoodwink We're using the acorn as offensive with a Mjolnir synergy or Daedalus crit synergy and. Mm. I did. I remember playing it a couple of times, and that was kind of fun being a a damage dealer with with the acorn shot. That was quite cool. Yeah, I mean, top, Topson played it twice yeah. at TI. I'm I'm yeah. scarred. I'm scarred also as an OG fan, like watching Topson lose Hoodwink mid like all season. Yeah. So. <laughs> not so, yeah, it's, it's obviously not good, but there was a phase where it could happen, and the fact that that's maybe a possibility. I gives like the it a bit of credit. I think the Ags is cool. Oh, um, the Boomerang. The Boomerang. I think the that, Boomerang oh, is an interesting one. That winds me up so much because I don't know what it does. I, <laughs> I think do it just lowers it lowers magic resistance, I believe. Or just increases damage taken by everyone hitting it. Who knows? 
Yeah, I actually don't know. I don't know what what's the um, shard again. It's the decoy, isn't it? It's really weird. It sends a decoy, and when you kill it, it like bushwhacks yeah, around it. It's pretty mediocre. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I think it's a little better now, but it used to be on a really long cooldown, and I think it's stunned for like one second or mm. something. It's just like what? What? <laughs> this didn't yeah. like make sense, but now, um, it's a little bit better. The invisibility in in trees is pretty annoying but like you can maybe make some cool plays it's kind of the same deal with like a bane hiding in the trees or something's like oh i don't think anyone's here oh i got w'd and then comboed type of a thing because mm-hmm. you almost have to do the w from out of vision because if you ever let someone see you're shooting an acorn you're not getting your w off yeah against good players yeah yeah, it definitely can be the way, like you said, with the Clone Blade and stuff. Uh, let's move on to Dawnbreaker then. We've got the last two heroes here, Dawnbreaker and Marcy. So Dawn, the Sun Mama or whatever. Uh, Adam, where have you where have you placed Dawnbreaker? How do you feel about the hero? Um, uh, I guess I'd put her like the third tier. Yeah, I guess that's B tier. I just think she's kind of like you know boring yeah (laughs) she's like in the game i don't think she's too op i don't think she's weak um i really didn't care for her when she first came into the game because the q could be interrupted so easily um and it's just like ruined the hero for me you know it's like Mm -hmm. this whole like that's the it felt like that was the whole point of the hero but then you get stunned or rooted or silenced and he's like oh my spell just stops he's like how does this hero like swing this hammer and it's like a robot but then you just get stopped (laughs) yeah um but now that i have the shard i think it's a lot cooler like it's a lot better um it's kind of think how it should have been on the ship Mm -hmm. Uh, and i think they fixed luminosity that was probably the most dead third spell (laughs) they've shipped since They've so since seven point like it was absolute trash. You would yeah. go into a demo and you would hit, and you're like, "I did. Did anything happen? Like, I, I don't." <laughs> yeah. And they they tried to like give it healing to allies, and it's like so negligible. And the damage you were like healing yourself was so negligible. Now I think it you can actually see it tick up when you proc. Mm. Um. But I like the W is kind of cool. It is a little weird that like you only travel about half the distance that you throw it. it makes chasing kind of tough. Mm. Um, I like that it leaves a fire trail and it's really big, slow. And um, the ult, the ult's awesome. I do. I really like that. I think it's really balanced. And um, it's like one of those heroes that you gotta you got to know when level six comes because all of a sudden the enemy is being a little more aggressive and you're like, Oh man, what are these guys doing? Hmm. Free kill for us. And then all of a sudden this gigantic um, robot mama comes down and slab slams her thighs around your neck. And you're like, Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. What do you reckon Marco Dawnbreaker for you? Tier two, second bottom tier to me bit too frustrating as a hero so like adam says with the q it's for so frustrating you try and land it and it gets interrupted or you can try and cast it and you can dodge it fairly easily if you're smart frustrating the w i think the hero is reliant on the w in the early game because that's your your damage output really before you've got items but then again it could be easy to miss or you're just too far to use it, or you only hit them with one of the hammer throws and not the second, or it feels unreliable as your critical early game spell. Frustrating. The E, I mean, like Adam says, it felt completely useless on release. Now I guess it it's useful late game. It's one of these where I've, I've never noticed it, but I've been in games where you'll be killing a DB late game, let's say, 
And then all of a sudden, from some crazy star break luminosity proc, they go from zero to three K HP. And I just don't understand what's going on. <laughs> so it, it seems to be strong because I've I've been frustrated by it. But then it's not like it's really doing anything for you pl- when you're playing it. So a bit meh. And then the ult, yeah, it's, oh, it's unreliable again. Unless you've got some good lockdown, but pff, that coordination is never going to happen. People just run out of it. It's like, I really oh, like I it as a counter initiate versus like initiation. You know, from a four. I, I so I'll make a point about pos fours talking about Marcy, but yeah, I think DB from the four is cool because. Yeah, like a counter initiation rather than what I'm thinking of the hero. Yeah. It's, it's very much through a core lens. Um, yeah. I like so, her as a three. I really like, you know, I've only, I think I've only played her 12 times, but I swear I've won all 12 of those lanes. Like, she is such a bully. Yeah. For, till minute 10. Like, it is so fun to be like 1100 HP or something crazy at level four and just make people sad but then it, you just fall off hmm. yeah my i currently have dawnbreaker lowest here which might be a bit harsh but currently c tier um I, I really i like the w i think the w is a cool spell the q has the problems that we've already been over that it can be interrupted it it just feels gimmicky the q and the ult to be honest with you they, they just both feel really odd and the ult from a support perspective, I like it as a counter initiate. But from a core perspective, it's so it's so boring just to use your ult to so that y- the enemies can't go on your hero. Say your your carry's being dived or something. It's so boring to like use your ult on your carry just to just so that the enemies run out of it again. And like, yeah, you saved your carry, but it's like kind of boring. You didn't achieve anything. You just now you've got. A spell on cooldown that didn't achieve anything other than like yeah it saved your carry but like nothing happened on the screen do you know what i mean like not there was no fun <laughs> um and then the the q yeah gimmicky weird sw- swings a hammer around it's very fun in lane it's kind of trashy like in the game the shard sure like does help but it's a shard it's not part of the hero you have to buy it it's a bit like meh luminosity kind of boring I do think um, one of the things that really hampers the hero is, or just our enjoyment of it, is that she's herself boring. Like, lore-wise and just kind of, like, sterile. Mm. Look, Like, no personality. I don't even know what she says. I actually have no idea what any she's, of the lines are, what she sounds like. It's like you took LC and made it a, a robot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just, like, boring. I yeah. need to turn. Yeah, it's, it's, it is pretty boring. I, I like the model, but the, if there's no like character, I think it might just be the voice. Like, yeah, the model's not bad. I think if you just gave it like more pizzazz with like the the voice or something, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, it's just like I don't feel anything when you when you <laughs> play her. Like, there's no like yeah overarching theme. It's just like a yeah big immovable object. Yeah, so tanky, so innately tanky. That's one thing that I don't mind about the hero is that. Well, actually, having said that, now I think about it, maybe it is annoying. Like so much of the hero's strength is purely is based on his strength <laughs> is purely based on the fact that the hero has a million HP and is unkillable with no items, and that's kind of again is almost gimmicky. It's like the hero is strong, and the only reason why it works, the only reason why you see it sometimes play carry. Only reason why you see it played three is because you don't need any items and you're unkillable. It's like great, you're just you picked a hero that's just innately mega tanky, and you have t- a couple of spells that are like annoying. So that's like your hero, and you have this ult that is gimmicky and weird. I don't know, I'm mo- not I, I'm not a fan of Dawnbreaker. Other than the lane, I love playing Dawnbreaker in the lane. Past lane, I honestly just want one of the. Like, there's just no part of Dawnbreaker that I enjoy post lane. I think. Yeah, I like the meathead factor when you go late, and I do quite in- enjoy that. It's, too, it's like a Mars, just like getting in the face of the enemy with a blink dagger, make it core. This is making me want to play the hero. Fair enough. On the model point, I do agree. Uh, to me, it's too sci-fi. 
it's too space spacey. I'm not into it. I, I'm too retro. I, I really like the the Warcraft heroes and that style. Mm. And this one's some kind of cyborg. Yeah, I, I prefer not, that. I to... don't feel it as much. Yeah, I see. You. I, I kind of agree. I do prefer it to the Marcy Hoodwink models, though, in terms mm. of just like anime. I'd rather sci-fi than anime, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, via Speaking of anime, the last hero we're yet to discuss is Marcy. Um, Adam, I'll let you take it away for the brave, the brave little mouse, the most recent hero. I mean, we haven't had too long with Marcy, so it's hard to make an assessment, or at least I found it hard to make an assessment, but where do you put I, Marcy? I go back and forth. I think I'd probably put her at a tier, like the second tier. Yeah, I could see her in three. Um, it's interesting that you know Dawnbreaker and Marcy, like they, I feel like they say the same amount of words, and and Marcy <laughs> has like no voice lines, and I think Marcy has like. 10 times the personality of Dawnbreaker with just whistles. Like, I, I love that. I think it's so cool. Um, we need, yeah, we need Dawnbreaker in the anime to like get some character or something. Yeah. Like, I, I love the whistles. I love the heroes that don't have like normal voice lines, but they still have personality like Phoenix and Io. Um, I definitely think Marcy has personality from like just a hero mm. and like lore standpoint. And, I think we've all talked about how we love the Q. Like, the Q is awesome. Um, but I I don't think she has a lot of versatility. So I think she kind of, like, has to go into damage. You know, has to go into a mm. kind of a certain play style. But I think she can do that play style pretty well. Um, and you know, this is another hero that deals with Phoenix pretty good because you get the, yeah. the charges on the, on the ult. Um, yeah, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen her. She's definitely not as popular as she was like just a couple weeks ago. She was in every game and now they're, you know, she's getting banned and then there are a lot of games where she just doesn't get picked. So I think that's healthy. That's fine. Um, mm. and I think. This might be my favorite iteration of a vector targeted spell, this W. Um Yeah. That's where I stand on her. I would um I look forward to her getting cosmetics. As the same with the Hoodwink and Dawnbreaker. I don't think they have cosmetics either. But mm. I think Marcy's will probably be the best out of those three. Yeah. And it's probably the hero I will play the most out of those three, like, going forward. I definitely think Marcy is the hero I'd play the most. Interesting. What do you what do you reckon, Marco, to round out your list? So I think... I got two points to make. So I would have put her tier one, second highest tier, when... Uh, pre-nerfs, when she was stronger. I think the popularity is dipped... Because she's now not broken. So. But That's I why I agree. Now... I, I agree totally with you. I feel like she's straddling the line between those two tiers. But now I think she's not... Uh, she's balanced, sure. But I would have put her second highest tier when she was stronger and was able to be played as a core, mid or off lane because her, her strength, damage output, ult up time, etc. All those damage factors were better. Now mm. she is, to me, a plus four hero. Fine. But I've got a qualm about that. Um, obviously, I'm coarse, I'm a bit biased, so now it's second to bottom tier because now as a kit, you really just got, to me, one, one and a half interesting spells. I do think that jump W is really cool, what you can do with it. Um, with that mobility and it's innovative, that is really cool. And then the Q, again, I, I like it from an offensive point of view, but I've seen it in games be a really effective defensive spell. That repositioning, really mm -hmm. cool. But I'm frustrated. So my second point is that I find it frustrating that these new heroes... My point is that the it's like the mechanics that they invent are so smart and interesting that 
they're only balanced as a position four. Yeah. And it's frustrating. Like and it, <laughs> yeah. it's really cool, these new new mechanics, all these heroes we've listed, like a, a snap or a, I mean, even Monkey was a four. Grimstroke's this really strong four. Um, Dawnbreaker is now an optimized four because of this global ultimate spell. All these new mechanics so interesting, but then they're, they're almost too broken when they're in the hands of a core. And when the numbers well, are a say bit too good to be a core. VP playing Dawnbreaker 1. Oh, it fucking failed, didn't it? They kept losing? Uh, I don't know. I just know they like, played yeah, it. I don't know. I think it was like one one win, two losses or something. I don't know. So, I mean, it's obviously not tried and tested one. But, but yeah. the same thing's happened with me, with Marcy, that it's really like that cue where you suplex someone, really, really cool. But now it's just, oh, mechanically, such a valuable spell that it. And this is what makes pos fours pos fours that in isolation those spells are so p- impactful. Yeah, and then you give them a couple items could they get a bit of farm priority and it kind of exponentially improves the hero. Pos five again they just use spells in isolation but they don't need the items like a bay you know our ancient apparition say. But you give a Marcy a blink dagger. I've seen it in games with that interaction of the suplex. Wow, immense impact. And so now the like, hero has been. <sighs> optimized to be a four because it, it, it's almost like it has to and to me as a core player i find that a bit frustrating because i see it happen to all of these it's like a willow is a four grim optimized four dawnbreaker now a four snapfire godlike four the kits and mechanics are so good and interesting that they can only be balanced as a, as a pos four support because when the were strong enough to be a core the like power of a core and the damage output of a core in combination with these really cool mechanics like the jump and the suplex put it into broken territory which I find a bit sad so mm. I've written in the yeah, notes void like, spirit I, 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 that's I think it. there's a voice I mean voice spirit that's why I like that's why I like void spirit phase, so much they've balanced him he's a two he's he a, a two he it's because they've well the they thing of void spirit is though. in a weird sort of way he didn't he's the one hero that didn't add like a broken mechanic the only thing that he added the, the thing yeah. that is added that made the hero is something that in a vacuum isn't even that good like he's got the astral it's his, step oh it's his astral yeah, step it, which is it, just like that's it's not so awesome. it's just that yeah, it's just they made a hero that like needs levels you know what I mean yeah that scales off of that type of stuff yeah exactly whereas these other heroes they've got these spells where in isolation are phenomenal what yeah. they can do yeah and I, so I, yeah, I've written it as curse of the new hero design that they're mm. making new heroes with intention of cool and interesting innovative new mechanics but then it's almost by default that they, they're going to be broken like when all when you've got 100 dota heroes with basic spells and then you've got a new hero which is relatively very innovative like think about a wraith king versus not like a, anyone who's new it, the, the spells are just too good in isolation and then they get slapped on the pos four so up. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, and it feels a little bit harsh. But I've put, I put Marcy C tier, I put it bottom tier, and bottom tier. Yeah, I put it bottom tier. So it's just I don't like any of the spells. Like the suplex is, is like kind of good, but I, I think Snapfire Cookie is just better and <laughs> is more interesting as a spell, like a ranged projectile that is both offensive and defensive. Like I know this spell is, ten- is technically offensive, but it's definitely offensive as a point click, right? You you click on someone, you stun them. But something like Fire Snap Cookie, like you use it on your ally who lands and stun them. Technically, you can do that on this hero, but it's like, is it really going to happen? No. Oh, I think Marcy's suplex is way better than Cookie, offensive and defensive. No, you think it's better as both? Yeah, yeah it's, it's if you've a- got a blink dagger. Yeah, it does require a blink dagger. Yeah, defensively, it's like, yeah, sure, you, you, you can, can jump on your out. teammate with a W and they get 35% movement speed. Yeah, I mean, dispose is the best spell. The W, I don't like any vector targeting, and I would much prefer this spell if you pressed an area on the ground and if it was possible for you to rebound to that position off of a unit in your vicinity, it just did it for you. Mm. I don't I don't understand why. I mean I know the reason why is because it gives a bonus to the so it matters who you rebound off actually matters because you get the bonus. I'd prefer if they just removed that and it was just a point thing that you could do. 
Mm. I don't know. I just I just feel like the vector targeting is so unnecessary, and it, it annoys me because I can't use it. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> um, I think that was the um, he hasn't figured out how to use it yet. Is the thing. Yeah, and I just don't. You might like why. it more if you. Yeah, I mean, we, we still won the game. We still yeah. won the game, even though you didn't know how to use a spell. That's pretty good. <laughs> and I don't like the spell as a concept. I just don't see the. I don't see the. It's just so weird and like gimmicky and unnecessary it's like why to get to a certain spot on the map do i have to like click on another hero and then like drag towards the spot just for like this weird quick animation of like just like i don't know i find it weird and then the old i absolutely hate i really don't like the old it's almost like the people that designed the hero were like well we want marcy to be a carry so let's give this crazy bonus damage attack speed thing so you just go doosh, 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 doosh and kill and there's a huge slow and doosh, doosh, that's what we want. How are we going to balance that? Oh, maybe like a 1.5 second downtime so you, the hero just does nothing for 1.5 seconds and then you can go doosh, 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 and just like go and it's like, oh my god. Yeah, I that uh, 175 downtime is, that might be the saddest 1.75 Dota, <laughs> like moments in Dota. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah, 1.75 like, you know, seconds. It's like, oh, I can't do anything. And it, it's almost like they they actually played themselves with the ult because it, it's like they wanted to carry with the ult. And I almost feel like the ult is what makes it unplayable as a carry because it doesn't... I think you're they never should just gonna, get rid of it. You're never going to scale into 40 minutes plus. I know like, that's late game. You're never going to scale into the late game with 1.5 seconds of downtime that you you can do nothing about. And so... Why can't you just give made a hero that's a gimmick. Those, like... Why can't you give her the charges or whatever and then in the 175 period in between you just have normal attack speed yeah like, why can't you just like normally Definitely. attack why do you I... have to just run around in melee range and and be just self disarmed you know what i mean like it's yeah definitely i would totally bummer. be down for that or just make it <laughs> just make it a if passive you want to make it a that, carry <laughs> make it a passive that increases your attack speed and then you've got a carry on your hands and take away this W spell, or like take away, the, even take away the Q. Well, I don't even. We've get. come up with the Ag shard. That's the Ag shard. It lets you attack in between. Mm, there be we go. We have fixed the hero. Yeah. <laughs> Just like how Dawnbreaker gets spell immunity, so that she can actually use her spell. We give mm. Dawn, we give a uh, Marcy an Ag shard that lets her actually use her ultimate and mm. be a carry. I never played Marcy when it was. I never played it when it was OP. I, I played it post nurse only. But the alt feels so out of line with the rest of the hero's kit, especially given this psychic is something you buff one of your allies with. Sure, you get it as well, but like it's great as a to buff your carry or whatever. But the ult is so out of whack with the rest of the hero that when I've played Marcy in my last few games, I've literally forgotten to use it, like in fights, because I'm I'm thinking like, oh, I'm a hero that wants to suplex and run around, and like, I'm, it doesn't feel like the kind of hero where you want to just like gimp yourself for 1.5 seconds and start right clicking someone. I want to be doing stuff. I want to be like rebounding around and suplexing. I, I wish the ult was more in line with if you're going to make it a pos four. Or a pos three, like have an alt that's in line with that. And if you're going to make it a carry, like don't have suplex and rebound that make the hero too good. Like what Marco was saying, too good to be a carry. So I just wish they'd either get rid of it and go pos three mode or pos four mode, or redesign the hero and make it a carry and don't have one point five seconds downtime. <laughs> so that's how I feel about Marcy. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Marcy. In fact, I'm not a fan of the last three heroes because I've gone bottom tier for Marcy, Dawnbreaker, and Hoodwink, which is Oof. maybe harsh. Maybe I need like a year to get used to a hero, and then I have a reasonable opinion. But yeah, yeah. That's our that's our tier list then. Is, so I am keen to play mid Dawnbreaker after all of this. That's my takeaway. Because, yeah, I remember playing with someone who went blink, like phase blink, BKB, and getting on top of people. But then it's just frustrating because in this, in a certain game, because of that Q issue, you're just a non fan Exactly, I was about to say, you, you want to play Dawn mid you until you she's get She's got into a lot of game. items. She's got like Satanic or something. That's she heals fun. a lot. It's yeah. pretty crazy. Like I've definitely been against a raid boss Dawnbreaker. We're like, oh, we can kill her, and she swipes once, 
and like mm. luminosity procs, and then she goes back up like half. And you know, whoa! What since when did that spell get buffed? And then, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, Dawnbreak it is so much gold. Yeah. It's such a bait. It's a hero that you think you want to play until you get into the game, it's go to use awkward. Q and get stunned, and you're like, yeah. okay, this this is why I, I don't enjoy the hero very much. I feel like my sentiment on mid is quite low at the moment. I feel like. I don't know what you think, but I feel like the mid lane role is you have to farm for 20, 25 minutes to get key items before you then do something. And the way I see it is, well, I'd rather just farm on a pause one for 20, 25 and then come out with even more power and excitement. I feel like yeah. the mid, it's, it's really, you have to farm and get... You do um, have to farm, but you're not. Temp- I feel like the tempo doesn't exist, isn't no, it? No, but it, I, just... I feel like they've just delayed the tempo. So I still, I feel like heroes like Void Spirit and Ember Spirit, Storm Spirit, even are still good. But it's almost like they've made the tempo, magic damage, mobility aspect scale for a bit longer and be a bit stronger. So if they take Void Spirit with the Kaya build and Ags and stuff, it's like you're still doing fun stuff. You just have to get two items first. But that, yeah, that takes twenty minutes to get. To. Yeah. Yeah, and same with Ember. You just need you need items. You can't do it. Mm. It's not as effective to do it straight away. But I still think you get to do the fun things. Yeah, it just takes ages longer to get there. But then I, my point is, well, if I'm going to wait twenty minutes, twenty five minutes to have fun, I might as well just play a hard carry that can hard carry. I don't know. So I've not played mid in a while. I feel like for that reason, I feel. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. I'm- I come out of these discussions wanting to play a Grimstroke. Actually, I want to get a Grimstroke support game in at some point when we play unranked party. I will just tank a pos five and play Grim. I feel like I, mean, I don't not, give the hero enough love. I definitely don't give it any love. I feel like this always happens. We come out of an ep and we all want to play these wonky heroes. We fly into a party with fucking Stan Grimstroke support and <laughs> yeah. me Dawnbreaker mid yeah. just flapping and we just get slapped. Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what will happen. Looking forward to it. Yep. Well, that's episode 162, I believe, in the books. We got through all the post 7.0 heroes. Next week, who knows what we'll be talking about. Maybe we'll talk about Spirit Breaker or one of the other heroes that have come out of nowhere and seem to be dominating the pub scene. Um, Until then, have a final whistle uh, and have a good week.